Aggressive Marketing Solutions, your solution for all business social media needs. If you need a team of social media marketers and content creators to help you build your brand on social media, text WES2020 to 541-709-6502 today. Get started building your brand on social media. Success is defined differently by every individual. Some have never even considered what it is. I hope when I get older, I'll be successful. What does that even mean? Money, cars, big house? On this show, we strive to look at it a little deeper, learning from successful individuals on what they believe success really is and how to obtain it. Everybody, enjoy the show. This is Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I am your host, Wes Tankersley. This is episode 24 with Eli Marcus. Eli is a one-man motivational guru, host of the Motivation Show on the C-Suite Radio, C Suite Radio Network. He interviews celebrities, book authors, experts in all fields. Eli is what I like to call a connector. Welcome to the show, Eli. Thanks for being on. Hey, Wes, thank you for having me. I can't wait for a great conversation here. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. This is an excellent, uh, excellent place for it. So, hey, Eli, can you do me a favor and kind of tell tell the audience a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you're from, and, and all that good stuff? Well, at the end of the day, Wes, I'm just a, a kid from Queens, New York City. You know, that's where I started, you know, in a very humble sort of setting. Um, lived in Flushing, Queens, um, not too far from City City Field. Actually, at the time, it was Shea Stadium. New York Mets land, uh, moved myself into Manhattan uh, because I didn't want to take the trains any longer. And interestingly enough, I took the trains uh, for a very, very long time. And I thought that's what you do when you're a kid from Queens. You just take trains, you know, you, you squash in with uh, 8 million other people with no t <laughs> opportunity to breathe. And that's what you learn to do until one day uh, I just uh, woke up. And the status quo was no longer acceptable. But it's interesting, Wes, how long you can live with the same status quo until something pops and something changes. And right. so here yeah, I am, I uh, you know, all these years later. Yeah, and it's funny because I talked to you this morning a little bit on the phone and we talked about how that kind of just popped for me last year and how exciting that change and that positive outlook on things and, and how just things feel so much better that way. Um, Go, going off of that, can you kind of talk about what you do? Because you've had a couple different jobs. You have these really great, this great story. And rather than me tell it, I'd like to hear you talk about what, what you did, what you, how you created this, this kind of, it's kind of like an empire, I'd say, you know, you've got this great radio show podcast platform and, and you've done a lot of things. And, and I want people to kind of understand how I call you a connector because that's what you are. Really. You, you interview people, you talk to people, you put people with who they're supposed to be. So how'd that, how'd that start? How'd that work out for you? Well, it started um, when I literally got into the profession of selling. Um, and uh, I started on Fifth Avenue and 40th Street uh, in Manhattan. And I went up to the top of the building in a three-piece suit in a 98-degree day. You can imagine, think of that, right? sweating yeah. uh, like a pig <laughs> and my mission was to go out and sell memberships for an organization called the united states chamber of commerce now wes i didn't even have a business card they just sent me out to the lions right go out there yeah. and cold call ceos and owners if you can imagine right so one oh, day yeah. i uh you know i'm up and down. i'm literally going from floor to floor to floor and then one day i see a guy who's got like the largest neck I've ever seen in a human being. And I look at him and I'm like, mm, you look very familiar. Now I'm kind of dating myself a little bit because the guy ended up being uh, a guy who was the uh, lead running back for the New York Jets for Joe Namath, a guy by the name of Matt Snell, who owned the business, right? Oh, man. Here I am, this like 21 year old kid off the street, no appointment, and I'm speaking to Matt Snell, right? Uh, and I've got this very official looking uh, kind of business card, right? Um, it's not really a card. It's actually like like an ID badge, right? 
So, um, right. you know, people were looking at me like I was an alien, like, what is this guy all coming off the street without an appointment? You know, so I, I had to be very assumptive like. Um, and anyhow, uh, I got beaten up uh, and battered <laughs> in the rough streets of New York City, uh, rejected a uh, 100 times a day. But I was determined. And so at the tender age of 21, there was uh, about 500 uh, salespeople in the country. Uh, and I was the youngest, but I was ranked like number six in the entire country. Okay. So your question might be, how'd you get there, right? That a legitimate yeah. question? How'd you get to number yeah. six? Truth is, uh, not necessarily on talent, uh, on tenacity. I was a complete right. bulldog. I had a mission and nothing was going to stop me. The other guys, the older guys, they're out for their one and a half hour martini lunches. You know, back then, that's what you did. You did your two, two, two three martinis. And I was like, you know something? I'm skipping lunch because I have a right. mission. I haven't made a sale yet. And, and I just wouldn't stop. So I, I did it on pure tenacity, pure effort. And that led to, you were talking, uh, you talked to me this morning a little bit about kind of your sales record and you were actually pretty good. I mean, you made it to number six. What else, how else did that sales job go for you? Cause it turned into a whole bunch of different things, right? Well, you know, here I am, I was, I was a grown up as a shy kid from Queens, right? And I saw that the shy kids were not the kids that seemed to have the things that they want. It was the kids that seemed to be uh, the ones with guts, the ones that asked for things, the one when th the guys that went after things. So what did I do? I chose the most difficult profession for a shy kid, which is go out and sell, right? I had to put myself right. on the line, get rejected every day, had to handle all that. So um, that led me to kind of live in the bookstore um, in the self-help section. So I bought every single book I could find. 1937's book, you know, from uh, um, uh, Dale Carnegie, you know. Yeah, and read then, that uh, one. <laughs> uh, right, you know, How to Win Friends yeah. and Influence People. Then a book from yep. 1936, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Yep. And then a book from 1956, Norman Vincent Peale's The Power of Positive Thinking, right? And I oh, devoured yeah. every book that I can possibly think of. And that led me on my path to uh, what my passion really is, which is to inspire, motivate, and help people to change because I was desperate for change. And then I ended up opening up a, an organization called the Seminar Center, one of the largest adult education centers in the entire country. Um, and I had every kind of top book author, celebrity, uh, expert in their field. Everybody from Michael Jackson, who I brought to Carnegie Hall, to Ivana Trump, uh, to um, the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, uh, Mark Victor Hansen, who is the number one uh, bookseller of all time in nonfiction. Uh, I had musical artists from Davy Jones from the Monkees to Judy Collins to Raise Men Zarek from the Doors, and it was quite a hoot. Um, so I brought my passion for, to the forefront. So I was listening to one of your episodes today, and you talked about, you know, kind of how this connection starts. And I, I mentioned a story to you about me on being on the sales call and how I ran into someone who kind of connected me with one of my previous interviews, Rob Brantley. Um, that running into the running back in the hall, things like that. How do you treat all these situations when you're around people? Because I think that it's really important that you know, you're kind of good to everyone. How do, how do you treat those situations? Because obviously you've got this face that people want to talk to. You have this personality that people are drawn to. But why is that? Why do you think that is? I mean, I got the sweet cheeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, in the other day, uh, West is, you know, you got to be yourself. You know, everyone else is taken. You got to be yourself. Uh, you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in, in your own ability and your own, um, you know, karma and your own, you know, uh, spirituality. Uh, you just got to be a good person. At the end of the day, if you're a good person, there's nothing not to believe in. People will be attracted to you. And you have to be a giver. That's really important. You have to be able to uh, not always have an agenda, not be about yourself. First question you should ask people that I often ask people is, what can I do to make your life better? Now, how many times do people ask you that question, Wes? Not very often. Not very often, for right? sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that so, that's probably part of the big picture is taking ownership and, and having a little bit of communication with someone 
I think that was another part of that conversation that we are all pushing to the social media platform as a type of communication. And we're lost on the fact that we don't know how to communicate with people and, and take interest in what they're doing and be genuinely interested in, the, in their behaviors and things like that and what they do and who they are. Yeah. So, you know, um, in like dealing with celebrities, right? you wonder like, what do they really need? You know, they got millions of dollars. They got four houses. They got the best cars. They seemingly have everything or do they? Right. Right. Because right. life is exactly. not over. Every, everybody still has to live and everybody still has to strive for something. So even the big, biggest people at the top, you know, still have needs and wants and everybody wants to feel good. And you'd be uh, surprised how insecure even people at the top are. So they always want to hear, you know, compliments, but not the same kind of compliment necessarily that everybody's given them. Oh, I loved your movie, you know, uh, the same, you know, uh, wrote sort of a compliment, but something a little bit more sincere, maybe a little more homework on them. Um, but, you know, everybody wants to hear something sincerely nice about themselves. And then, you know, uh, like I just asked uh, another celebrity uh, just the other day, I said, what can I do to help you? I know you don't need a lot in this life, but I'm there for you. You know, what can I do without an agenda, without being paid? And he told me. So you ask and you get. If you never ask and if you just assume, you get. You kind of get nothing. So, you know, my feeling is, um, you know, you always got to be in the ask. And you always got to ask in a way that's going to help them first. They'll find a way to help you eventually. But if you go in with that thinking originally, you turn people off pretty quickly because they know, you know, oh, here's another person that wants something from me. But how many people are just willing to give? Right. And that's and I think that's that's a very, a very important thing, because like you said, people aren't going to want to help you if they, all they know is that you want something from them versus you can help them and offering them something in return for what they're doing. And that's a great way to look at it. So you had you had that you had the seminars you have had you did. What's the next thing in this kind of story of your life here? What, what's what's the next step that you've gone into now? After after that, you got your salesmen, your seminars, all these things. What what else do you do? Well, I have my day job in which, uh, you know, I'm uh, in the publishing world in New York City, um, which is taking a little bit of a hiatus now because, uh, you know, we're in the hospitality industry in New York. So you can kind of read between the lines in the COVID world. Uh, there's not a lot happening there. So what that's allowed me to do, you know, there's there's a you know, they say there's a silver um lining in every cloud and this is my silver lining right now because it enables me to go back to my passion go back to my uh, podcast um, it's called the motivation show so this is something i did a bunch of years ago um, and uh, i stopped doing it and now i think is the right time to bring it back into the world so um, i stopped doing the seminar center after 9 11 which is quite a long time ago but the passion of wanting to make a difference and wanting to help people uh, and wanting to uh, give people the gift that I've been given has never left me. And some people never realize that they have a certain gift. And unfortunately, you know where the most gifts end up lying, uh, Wes? Where they end up? Where's, where's that? Sadly, in the graveyard. That's where most yep. people's gifts end up. Yeah. So if you don't go out there and find out what you're made of. Uh, so I found out that, you know, something... Yeah, maybe I grew up as a shy kid from Queens, but it doesn't mean that's how I have to be defined for my, the rest of my life. I actually found that I'm what I, I guess I call myself an extroverted introvert. So I have both sides <laughs> to me. And I think that's so with a lot of people. Michael Jackson's a perfect example like that, right? Johnny Carson. Right. You know, when you take them off the stage, they, they don't know what to say. But on the stage are the world's greatest performers. So we all have a little bit of that showmanship in, in, in ourselves. Some of us never bring it out. Um, so I learned that there's that part of me. But what's most important about that showmanship is there's something there that I could make a difference. Because my definition is that every single person that I come across, my goal is that I made some difference, even if it's a small difference in their world. Right. Now, how many people, you know, go around life thinking that every connection that they have that they got to make a difference. Yeah, and that's exactly how I feel about this show. You know, um, this is this is something where I'm trying to show people that success is different to every single person. It doesn't matter what it is, what it's defined by, but that you're able to get out there and do what you want. And 
and push yourself to be the best that you can in whatever that situation is. And like you said, most of that stuff just ends up on the floor because people just, they give up. And that's, that's one of the things that is really important to me is that people know that failure, even though you fail, you can always get back up and don't end up in the grave, end up doing what you want, follow your passion. Yeah. So, you know, Wayne Gretzky says you miss 100% of the shots you never take. So you got to keep shooting. It's very difficult. You know, uh, Muhammad Ali talked about getting off the canvas, you know, getting knocked down on the canvas hundreds of times and getting up. That's the measure of a human being. It's not how many times you get knocked down, it's how many times you get up, which is not so easy because a lot of people just quit. You know, when you're talking about the field of sales, uh, it, studies show that it takes five calls uh, minimum to make a sale. Guess where most people quit, Wes? Probably number two or three, I would say. You think right one, exactly in that sweet spot. No, it's, oh, you know, yeah. it's in well, that sweet spot. A lot of yeah. people quit after uh, contacting me after the first time. I can tell you that. Yeah. So I have a lot of people in that category. Um, but, you no, know, people just quit too soon because people yeah. can't handle the rejection. And you've got to realize that it's not a personal thing. It's just easier said than done, granted. But you have to actually almost embrace rejection. See, that's where I became uh, good at what I did. That's where I rose to be literally, uh, and I'm bragging, but, you know, the number one uh, ad salesperson in the world at what I did on a local level. Because I don't define rejection as, as you know, a failure. I actually embrace right. it. I actually like it. How many people actually like failure? I like it Not because I know. Right, Russ? So I, I like it because I know I put out the effort and I know I did everything that I possibly could. I left all the marbles on the table. I slid into home plate. My uniform's dirty. There's nothing else I could have done. So I go to sleep at night saying, you know, I did what I can do. It wasn't meant to be. Yeah, and that's kind of the switch that I made as well, you know, with what I was doing. When I, when I quit, I was a teacher for four years. When I quit doing that and went back into sales again, I had this why am I not getting this? Why am I not getting that? What's the deal? And when, as soon as I switched to the point that if I wasn't getting the sale and I knew that I did everything that I possibly could do to convert it and it didn't happen, then I left it all on the table. And that is just a great mentality because you know, you're satisfied with what you did. You may have not got the outcome that you wanted, but you can turn around and you can go back and, and go after it again. Exactly. So this led to just you. Keep swinging. Yeah. Yep. And this led to you doing some motivational coaching. Now I checked out, I checked out your website today and I was looking at it a little bit and I watched some of your podcasts and you mentioned that they'd been on there for a while. Um, but you're, you're moving into this new thing. Um, your motivation show is going to be going on C-suite now and you're going to revamp the whole thing. How, how is that process going for you? And, and are you excited about it? How's, how's that going? I'm telling you, I am besides myself. I am very excited. So I'm going to be on the C-Suite Network Radio, which is the largest uh, business podcasting network in the entire world. And I'm going to be probably the only one who's not just uh, only business oriented there. Um, so I'm going to mix it up. But they're all going to have, you know, at the end of the day, a theme which would be great for business. But my colleagues are people like Robert Kiyosaki, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, who's also on there. So I'm pretty excited to be in that kind of company. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mentioned to you this morning that uh, Michael Gervais, one of the people that I listen to, he actually helps Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks is on there as well. And when I saw that this morning, I was like, wow, you are, you are one, one of those really big networks. And that is just, you know, that's amazing. And I, I hope that that works out really well for you. I'm a little disappointed because I listened to that one episode today and you had to revamp everything. So I'm hoping that you listen to some of those episodes and do new ones in, you know, in the form of what you kind of did, because it there is some really good information in in the episode that I listened today and a couple other ones. So don't forget about those because they're still good things. They're still things that I listen to and, and push for, you know. So I really, you know, thank you for, for putting that stuff out there. Well, thank you. You know, uh, I'll tell you what my goal is. My goal is to transform people's lives in every possible definition of the world. And you and I had a conversation earlier, you know, how some people define success with having the four houses and the three Mercedes. Um, and that's fine if they do, and that's what floats their boat. You know, for me, I've been through the school of hard knocks enough to know that you better have a lot more going on than just that. 
and you, you need to have a more balanced world. Uh, and you got to take care of your health. A lot of people only pay attention to their health when it's gone. So I went ahead and I interviewed, now continue to interview some of the world's leaders in the area of health. You know, so I, I interviewed a guy who actually wrote a, a book called the China Study, which is the largest uh, nutritional study in history, and it turned me into a vegan, which is a whole oh. other story to get into if you ever want to get into. Um, I don't know. But, I'm a strict carnivore. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's and that's fine. You know, uh, you know, to each his own, right? For, for me, it's right. been very healing. You know, there, there are things that 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 uh, I need to do. Uh, at my age, you know, <laughs> to guard right, against right. Uh, certain <laughs> issues. So, yeah, it's made, made me a lot healthier. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, to each his own. And that's really, you know, that's what I like is you you are, you know, educating yourself on the best way and the best thing that for you. And who knows, you know, when I get a little bit older, I may need to change my ways. But it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's always, I love the fact that you talked about fiction. reading books. and <laughs> Right. <laughs> Can you talk a little bit, you know, you mentioned that you started reading some of these books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Um, uh, gosh, now they're, the names are missing me because I read them all too. Uh, Dale Carnegie. Thank you, Grow Rich. Um, yep. yep. Napoleon Hill. Do you continue to read and how, how big of an important thing is that in your life as far as you're growing as a, as a person? Uh, I read all the time. I'm constantly reading. I am the ultimate reading geek. Uh, you know, the truth is that no matter how big you are on this planet, you probably don't even have 1% of the information. There's always more information. The other thing, Wes, is that you could read a book like Think and Grow Rich literally 20 times. And maybe on the 21st time, you're finally ready for the message. So the question is, when are you ready for the message? It's not just that you read something, it's got great information because a lot of people will read a book, go to a seminar. I've had people come to me and say, you know something, the motivational wore off. And motivation is not supposed to last a lifetime. You don't just go to one course and it lasts a lifetime. It's a daily thing. It's a progressive, uh, like uh, Earl Nightingale, one of my favorites said, you know, it's, uh, success is a progressive realization of a worthy goal. So it's progressive. It's something you do every day. I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly searching. And then I like to reread the old books because there's something in there that I'm just not getting. Because, you know, I'm stubborn like every other human being, you know? We, we have a plan, we think we're gonna do something, and then, you know, things go wrong, and then you gotta go back to the basics. Yeah, and one of my goals every day is to learn something new every day, because I don't know everything, you don't know everything, no one knows everything, and I think that that's great, because reading those books, you know, I have, I, you can't see them over here, but I have two degrees on the wall here. And I can tell you that I learned more, not in college, but in life doing those things. And, and over the last, you know, year, I've read probably four or five of those books that you just mentioned. And they just, they just make, make me realize that my thinking is correct. And it's helping me to grow to be a better person. And positivity is something that you have to choose and you have to work on. It's not going to just be, Hey, I'm positive today and tomorrow it's going to be fine. So it is a, it's a work in progress every single day. So I love the fact that you talked about that and how you're, you have to be willing to work to grow, to grow that for yourself. Uh, Wes, you want me to give you a game changer? Let's hear it. All right. So I'm going to give you a story from uh, back in the old days. So I'm sitting in a restaurant in New York City, a French restaurant on East 76th Street. Uh, and who's sitting at the next table? Jackie O, you know, Jack Lanassis. Uh, fast forward uh -huh. about 10 years later, I'm in an Italian restaurant. Who's sitting at the table next to me? JFK Jr., right? Oh, geez. Now, uh -huh. now talk about royalty there, right? So now, right. Did, I approach, did I approach either table? Yes or no? What do you think? I would say probably yes. No, I, I did not. Right. Because it was a long time wow. ago. I did not. Right. Now, fast forward. Uh, I'm talking to the number one bookseller in history in nonfiction, Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote a new book uh, called Ask. Right. And so uh -huh. uh, when I when I saw the title of that book, I started rifling through those pages, one page after the next. And what the book Ask has reinforced in my mind 
is that you always have to be asking. You cannot assume that you're going to be rejected. You cannot assume they don't want to be bothered. You got to take the risk. No matter what the result is, there's a lot good that could happen if you take the risk, but nothing good will happen if you sit on your fanny like I did and just gawk with drool down yeah. your mouth, like, ah, uh, hamana, or like Jackie, hamana, hamana, hamana. You can't be like that. You got to <laughs> go for it, you know? So that's right. the lesson of today is that no matter what situation you think is overwhelming or daunting or the celebrity is too big, you got to go and make the ask. Yeah. And that's now, now I've got to read that book because that is exciting. And I, that's, yep. Love it. Okay. Well, we're running, we're running a little long on time here and I could sit here and I could talk to you for hours, but uh, we don't have hours. So um, I do want to ask you a couple questions. I want to give you a chance here. I know that this podcast coming out is a new thing for you. It's not, it's a new old thing. Um, can you tell us where this is going to be located, where we can find you? Um, if we want to follow you, I know you have a website, all those stuff. Just, just give us the idea where we can, where we can connect with you. Yeah, you can find me on my website, EliMarcusSuccess.com. That's EliMarcusSuccess.com. And you'll also be able to find me on uh, the C-Suite Network um, website as well. That's C-Suite, S-U-I-T-E Network.com. You'll find me there. And, of course, you'll be able to find me on Apple, Stitcher, and uh, all the Google and all the other uh, platforms. So just search The Motivation Show, or you can go on Twitter, find me at the Eli Marcus. And how close are we to getting to getting the to getting to see these episodes that are coming out? When are you when are you posting those out? You know something? As soon as the uh, they accept me, which should be in about two weeks, it'll be ready to roll, and the world is going to change at least my world, and I hope to change other people's worlds uh, because my goal is that again every single person that comes across my path, you know what they're going to get, Wes. They're going to get the 500 plus books that I've personally read on self help all dumped into that podcast, plus oh, the expertise of, of the world's best. You know, whether it's an athlete or whether it's an expert on health or whether it's a uh, you know top book author, we're bringing them all to the forefront. Well, I'd ask you who you are, but I want you to I want to leave it uh, leave it or who who these guests are, but I want you to leave it to, to my mind to think about who some of these exciting people are. Cause I think it's going to be great. I look forward to hearing it. Okay. So we end every show with one last question. And that question um, is different for everyone. I talked to you a little bit about it. And that question is um, the show is called shaping success. And the reason why I named that is because everyone's success is shaped differently. It, we talked about it being fast cars, lots of money, um, whatever you're doing. But what I really want to know is how do you shape your success? What, what is success to you? How do you create that? Well, my definition of success is that you uh, never have to look back and regret your life. So you've done the things in life that have not only helped you move forward, but have helped others move forward. So a life lived just for yourself is a very boring uh, life, I can tell you that. So just to collect toys for yourself should not be our goal. You know, so you gotta get out there and love other people, help other people, and always have something every day that helps you to pop out of bed. Have that passion, uh, do something that floats your boat. Don't just do something to make money. And I, I really, like that because i know as some of the things that i've gone through it's always been i wanted to help other people to be successful as well and that's exactly what you just said it's it's not just your success it's everyone else's that you're helping create so that is a great message well i want to take the time i wanted to just say thank you again for taking your time you know this is really cool i'm sitting here in star idaho you're in well you're actually in florida but you live in new york um, and this is the, the very cool thing is that we're able to have this conversation from so far away, look at each other and, and talk about it. So thank you very much for taking the time to be on the show. Thank you so much, Wes. It's been a blast, man. And I'll see you at the top, buddy. Oh, yeah. I've, yep. That's where, that's where we're going all the way there. 
So you got that. All right, everyone. Well, I wanted to say thank you very much for listening and watching the show here. This is the end of it. One of the things that I want to talk about is if you could please help me out by going over to Apple Podcasts. This will get released in a couple of days. Give it a five-star review. Give it a rating. Give me a little feedback on what it is and help me to grow this because I'm really excited about where it's going. I want to help other people be successful and see how they can create that. Uh, until next time, I want you to I want to challenge you to try and find the shape of your success. This was Shaping Success with Wes Tankersley brought to you by Aggressive Marketing Solutions. If you need a team of marketers to help you with social media, all you need to do to start is text WES2020 to 541-709-6502. 541-709-6502. That is Aggressive Marketing Solutions. Have a great day. See you next time.